Greetings everyone. Today we're going to talk about complex numbers. Very important in our study of AC circuit theory. So the basic idea of a complex number is that we're using a sort of two-part, two-dimensional representation for things like current, voltage, impedance. We have a real axis and an imaginary axis. So what is the imaginary? Well, Basically, it's the square root of minus 1, right? You can't think of a, a real number that that corresponds to. Now, in a math class, you would probably see this written out with the letter i. We don't use that for obvious reasons. We use i for current. So we use j. So j is equal to the square root of minus 1. And we can go further with this, and say that therefore j squared would have to be minus 1, and j cubed would have to be minus j, and then of course j to the fourth would have to equal 1. All right? Okay. Now, we put this out in a little xy plot, something like this. The horizontal is going to be our real axis. And the vertical here is going to be the imaginary axis. All right, so obviously plus minus as expected. So we sometimes call this the J axis. In other words, this would be plus J and this would be minus J, right? And what we'll do is we'll describe, you know, like a voltage or a current, for example, as a vector on this plane, on this real imaginary, this complex plane. So for example, we might have something like this. I have some magnitude out here. That's my vector. I'll just use an M for magnitude. And then there's an associated angle, theta. That's one way to describe it. That particular way we refer to as polar form. All right, so polar form is also referred to as magnitude plus angle, right? Magnitude at some angle theta. But we can also see that this is made up of components. In other words, I have a component on the real axis, right, this, and I have a component on the imaginary axis, right, that guy. So this piece, you know, we would call the, the real part, and this piece we would call the imaginary part. That we refer to as rectangular form. So we would write that typically as a real plus or minus an imaginary. We usually just put the reals first. All right. It would be uh, very useful for us to know how to convert back and forth between these two things. Okay. Um, one thing I do want to sort of bring to your attention is a minus sign basically produces a flip. Okay. So if you had this magnitude negative, it would be going this way. Or if you had this magnitude going negative, it would be going this way. So just remember this a minus, a, ne a negation is a 180 degree flip. That's all that means. Okay. Um, okay, so let's look at some conversions. All we really need for our conversions is just a little right angle trig. That's all. So let's say we want to do um, real to polar, or uh, excuse me, rectangular to polar. Well, 
Now, what we really have out here is a triangle. Okay, you know, if you look at it this way, you have something like this. All right, so this would be your uh, real part, this would be your imaginary part, and this would be your magnitude. And then, of course, we have some angle theta in here, right? Nice right angle trig. So, how would I, given the rectangular form, in other words, given real and imaginary, how do I find the magnitude and the angle? Well, you know, to find the magnitude, we can just use um, Pythagorean theorem. All right, so the magnitude will just be the square root of the square of the real, which I'm just going to abbreviate as RE here. I'll continue to do that, plus the square of the imaginary. Okay, now to get the uh, angle theta, we just uh, notate, we just remember that um, tan is the opposite uh, um, over the adjacent. So theta would be the arctan of the imaginary divided by the real. Okay. All right, what about going the other way? Well, I want to go um, polar to rectangular. So in other words, we have the magnitude and the angle. I want to get the real and the imaginary. Okay, so to get the real, the real part, we simply take the magnitude, you multiply it by cosine theta. And to get the imaginary part, that is going to be j times the magnitude sine theta. Okay, let's, let's look at a couple of um, examples here, okay? So let's say that we have uh, maybe in a rectangular case, we have 3 plus j4, right? So what does that look like in terms of a little plot over here? We would have something like this, okay? So here's my j4. Here's my three. And I want to get that magnitude and this angle. Okay. All right. So I should be able to just square J4, square the three, right? And when we square the J4, we just think in terms of squaring the four. All right. So the magnitude part of this is going to be the square root of three squared plus four squared. Right, 16 and 9 is 25, square root of that is 5. And then uh, the angle will simply be the arctan of 4 over 3, 4 thirds. And that's going to work out to 53.1 degrees. And that makes sense. You know, if you just look at this little diagram here, yeah, this is longer than the J4, and 5 looks good because this is longer than this one. You expect it to be a little bit more than 45. So 53.1. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay. Over here, same sort of deal. Um, you know, let's say we have something like, you know, 10 at an angle of 30. So, you know, I'll draw my axes here. So I've got 10 at an angle of 30. That's something like this, right? Magnitude 10. There's my 30 degrees. And I want to find the two pieces, right? So I want to find that piece of it and that piece. Okay, so the real, the bottom one, is going to be my magnitude of 10 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And the imaginary part is going to be j times 10 times the sine of 30 degrees. And those two pieces are going to work out to 8.66 for the real part. All right, so this piece over here is 8.66. And then uh, the imaginary part works out to J5. So that's this part over here. Right. And again, that scaling, you know, seems to make sense. This is bigger. 
we have an angle less than 45 degrees, so that looks pretty good too, all right? All squares up real nice, and there you go. Okay, now what about some math operations, all right? How do I add and subtract these? How do I multiply and divide them? Well, you could do this graphically, but that's not the most convenient thing in the world, okay? So if I wanted to add or subtract, all right, just to kind of give you a visual on this. You know, so suppose I have, um, I'll just call them A and B. I have a, um, a vector over here. All right, so I'll just call this guy A. And then we'll change colors over here for B. So what do I get as a result? Well, what I would do is I could do a head to tail on this. In other words, I would take my B vector, take the tail of this, put it on the head of this. In other words, just copy it, and translate it up. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just moving this up. And then the resulting endpoint, in other words, this guy right here in red, that's the equivalent. All right, so that, in other words, this right here in red is A plus B. Okay, if I wanted to subtract, do the same kind of thing, it's a, a similar process. So again, um, you know, let's take a, a vector out here called A and another vector called B. And what I would do now, same thing with head to tail, but I just have to sort of flip B, all right? Remember the minus 180 degree flip. So I take this thing and I, instead of going that way, I go this way with it. In other words, take the, the head of it and put it on the tail. So that kind of goes like that, all right? So I've taken this whole thing and just kind of pushed it up like that. And now there's my result, all right? So this right here is a minus B. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, this is useful when we do what are called phasor diagrams. It's useful to have an image in your head of what this actually is. But, you know, computing it is not convenient to get out a piece of graph paper and do this. So the easy way to do an add or subtract, whatever form they're in, make sure you do the add or subtract in rectangular. So if it's in polar, do a conversion. Right? If you have something like this over here, okay, you know, you, you have a 10 at an angle of 30, convert it into the real of 8.66 in the imaginary of J5. And what you do in this case is you simply add or subtract the reals to the reals, the imaginaries to the imaginaries. Okay? So it's real to real, imaginary to imaginary. So as an example, let's say we have one vector that's um, 10 plus J5, and I want to add another vector that's uh, 6 minus J2. All right, so add the reals together, that's 16. Add the imaginaries together, All right, that's plus J3. There's your answer. And like I said, if you're going to subtract, then you subtract the real, so I would subtract 6 from 10, I would subtract the negative 2 from 5, and that's how I would do my subtraction. Okay? Great. Now, what about multiplies and divides? Well, in this case, it turns out to be very convenient to do this in polar form. Now, you could, uh, you could do a FOIL. In other words, if you had something like this, like if you had A minus JB, you had some rectangulars, right? And then you did, I'm just gonna be kind of generic here, C plus JD. You could do the FOIL. In other words, first, outer, inner, last. You could say, well, well that's, uh, you know, A times C, A times uh, the, the JD, minus JB times C, minus JB times JD, in which case, you know, you're probably gonna have to use some of these uh, identities up here.
and then you'd have a value in, that's you know ultimately in rectangular form. But it's actually really quick to do this if you have it in polar form. So if I if I have something in rectangular form, in other words, like this thing, the three plus j four, I want to turn that into its rectangular form five fifty three point one. Reason being is all you have to do is uh, multiply and divide the the magnitudes, the, right? The polar form magnitudes, and then you add or subtract the angles, right? So you just to repeat there, you multiply, divide the mags, and then you, you add or subtract the angles. Bingo, you'll get an answer in uh, polar form. And if you need it in a rectangular form, obviously you can con convert it back. Okay, so as an example, if you had, uh, let's say, 110 at an angle of 20 degrees, and you want to multiply that by 3 at an angle of 40, you would multiply the magnitudes. So 110 times 3 is going to get you 330. You know, whatever the units happen to be. And then we would add the angles together, right? So 20 and 40 would give us 60 degrees. Okay, if I want to um, divide, let's say I have 50 at an angle of 45 degrees, and I want to divide that by 2 at an angle of 15 degrees, right? it's going to be 50 divided by 2, right? There's your divide. So that's going to be 25. And then we subtract the angle. So I'm going to subtract 15 from 45, and that's going to get me 30 degrees. Okay? All right. That's your final result. Now, you'll find it convenient, like I said, in, in some cases, you know, depending on the computation you're doing, to have things in polar form. And sometimes it's convenient to have them in rectangular form. So ultimately, it's really good if you can go back and forth if you actually carry them through. Very often for final results, we like polar form because we want to know what the magnitude is. For example, if we have a voltage or a current, we want to know, you know what that maximum voltage is going to be. It's more convenient to have it in polar form than it is in rectangular form. But sometimes we do want it in rectangular form. So flipping back and forth between these sort of two representations is something you're going to do a lot. Um, consequently, when you're looking at a calculator, right, to do the computations, it's really useful if, at a minimum, it can do polar to rectangular conversions, rectangular to polar, back and forth. And it's also really good if you have a calculator that can um, do it in native form. So there are calculators where um, they might have it, like a J or an I operator built into it, and you can just write the value down, or maybe they'll give you like a little pairing um, you know, they might have you write a complex value, let's say in rectangular form, as, you know, 5 comma 3, which would mean 5 real 3 imaginary, in other words, J3. Um, and some people you'll see will put the J at the end rather than the front. I like to say, you know, 5 J3. Some people like to say 5 3 J. It's the same thing. The reason I put the J up front is so you don't forget about it and you don't confuse it with a unit, you know, because I like to say 4 volts. I don't want to say 4 J volts. I like to say J4 volts, right? That's maybe a little quirk on my part, but I find that works out pretty good. You don't forget it. You don't accidentally, because this would be evil, right? You don't accidentally do this. You don't say, you know, 5 plus J3 is 8. No, this is not 8. This is completely nonsensical. It doesn't make any, any sense whatsoever. This is about as sensible as um, adding your height to your weight and thinking you have a useful number when you get done. You know, like, what are the units for that? Well, he's 6 feet tall, and he weighs 150 pounds, right? So, you know, what's the end result? Foot pounds? Suddenly it's a torque? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so this is something we have to... Um, get very comfortable with, something we're going to use uh, considerably. And homework, baby. It's what you got to do.